Hey cats, it's your mid old man, Ed Budd here. We're only three months into 2024 and there's been so many great shoe releases, it's pretty hard to keep up. We've had absolute bangers from the likes of Saucony, Nike, Asics and Puma, to name but a few. So here are my top 10 releases for the year so far up to March 2024. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in people, it is always appreciated. Help me to reach a million subscribers by clicking that button below, it's free of charge, don't you know? Also give this video a thumbs up, like and comment below to help out with the algorithm. Danke schön. I've got my top 10 shoes that I've been enjoying so far up to March 2024. Can't believe that we're already a quarter into the year, it's crazy. At number 10, we got the Asics Nova Blast. Now this one's grown on me quite a bit since I first reviewed it back at the tail end of 2023. Over the last three months I've actually been reaching for this one quite often. I really like the quite plush cushion that we've got here now. Nova Blast is perhaps a little bit more of a sort of daily shoe, not quite so into the recovery category that the Nimbus 26 is from the same brand. The cushion here is not quite so dense as what we get in the much larger and thicker Nimbus. Now the Flight Foam Blast Plus material we've got here in the midsole certainly is different to the very first iteration of the Nova Blast. Less squashy but it's certainly still forgiving underfoot. I've been using it quite a bit on the treadmill of recent time. You've got sort of comfortable levels of cushion on the top of the foot there from the tongue though the shoe perhaps is a little bit warmer than it has been before in previous versions. I think a few people have had issue with the fact that it's now a little bit too stable perhaps. They've reduced the fun level somewhat and the outsole grip perhaps a little bit lacking, though I am finding this better than perhaps some of the other ASICs models that were released a little bit before it. So some may find some of those issues a turn off, but I meet very few runners that don't like the Nova Blast 4 when they've picked it up. So that's at position number 10. At number 9, we got one of my top treadmill shoes at the moment. It's got to be the Supernova Rise from Adidas. Now, another shoe that has grown on me over time. Initially, I really wasn't too sure about this one. I'm perhaps still not actually in terms of using it outdoors, but on the treadmill it's an absolute winner. The Supernova Rise uses a Piba based foam here in the midsole and I have to say it is quite nicely cushioned. I am still perplexed a little bit by the fact that they put these firmer rods in, it kind of nerfs the cushion that you get here. Just give us the full Piba experience here at Adidas, that's all we want. I think they've used those in the Supernova Solution as well, the stability version of this shoe. Maybe someone at Adidas could tell us why they're there. Great for easy runs or sort of recovery type efforts for me. At least now I've managed to get a few miles out of this one. When I first picked it up I was really underwhelmed with the performance, though I am really keen to see how Adidas utilise this new Dream Strike Plus foam in future models. So it's growing on me very, very slowly, but it is improving over time. Perhaps it's one of those models you need a little bit of braking. At number eight, a solid offering here from Puma, the Velocity Nitro 3. Puma have really improved their daily offering here in this third iteration. It looks and feels a little bit more pacey than the last two did, perhaps somewhat nimbler. You've got a little bit more foam here actually, a little bit more cushion too, a few millimetres extra, it just separates it out from some of the other kind of daily options. The last two were quite heavily padded, this one they've reduced it a little bit, just got it in the heel, you know, where it counts kid. A little bit less present on foot than before and of course you've still got the classic winning combo underneath here, the Puma Grip outsole. I think this one is really aimed at your daily mileage to withstand some of those sort of shorter range efforts on a more frequent basis. Certainly worthy of a place on the list this time though. I'm really enjoying this latest version. Durable as always in the outsole and comforts top notch and a little bit wider in the toe box this time out. So that's my pick at number eight. At number seven, we got the Speed 4 from Saucony. Updated this time, a little bit more stable, perhaps a little bit more of a consistent feel underfoot than in the Speed 3. I do prefer the midsole in this version of the shoe. The Speed 3 was almost too soft for me from that aspect. Bit of a return to form, this one. I am still tinkering around, may switch the laces out here with something that's not quite so stretchy. And I think the winged plate still isn't perhaps for everybody. I think they pretty much had it spot on in the V1 and 2, though the speed model will always be on the radar of runners, certainly 
has built up a bit of momentum. It's just versatile and a fun model to run in. You can't take that away from it. And if you want to go perhaps a little bit longer and some faster paced sort of sections in your runs, then the Endorphin Speed 4 is right up there. Definitely an improvement over the Speed 3 though, that's for sure. And at position six, we've got the Adidas Takumi Sen 10. I'll tell you what, whenever you pick this shoe up after you've had something that's even like 260 or 270 grams in hand, this thing is just so light, it's nuts. I picked this one up in January and it's been really hitting the spot for me for those faster sessions where I'm doing some reps or intervals. The upper is just superbly crafted on the Sen 10. Though perhaps it is a little bit on the narrower side, it's not gonna be perhaps for you wide-footed runners. I really love the fact that this one comes with that slightly lower midsole stack, though still very responsive, it enables you to get that quick turnover and increase the cadence. Feels like the shoe's staying out the way a little bit more of your running, doesn't perhaps control you as much. And of course, you've got great grip and it's a super lightweight model. That's meant it's a staple in my current running shoe rotation for these fast sessions. That seems to be hitting the spot for me as well. Certainly another 10K PB today, in fact. More on that later on. So at position six, it's the Takumi Sen 10. If you're enjoying today's video, people, please do help the channel out by hitting that subscribe button. Give us a like and drop us a comment too. Okay, we're up to the big five now. What's first? I'm loving the max stack that I've got here in the Hoka Celo X1. This thing is as close to an Adidas Primex strung as you're gonna get without the three stripes on there. And that shoe is just sold out. So this is your best bet. The Celo X1's got some big bounce from that huge midsole stack that we've got here. Piba stuff too. Even the insole's about four mil, so it all adds up and just gives you this really enjoyable sort of fun and exciting running experience. What I love about this shoe is they've not bothered with a traditional strobel, so you've got like the insole right on top of that Piba foam, and you can tell as well. That's the secret to this shoe. I love grabbing this one and just heading out running for some fun with no sort of distance or pace in mind just sort of seeing how i feel a genuinely fun shoe to run in it just makes the whole process enjoyable and that's really what you should be doing it for right if you're going out running training for something and it's like a chore or you're almost showing signs that you're not really enjoying yourself then there's something wrong there yes this one is pricey you can't get away from the retail it's very high people moaned about these laces as well but i think they're absolutely fantastic they actually work for the purpose of the shoe just locks your foot in place. If you had anything else there, it wouldn't really work so well. It is in fact the second Hoka shoe I picked up last year and I love both of them. Rocket X2 still working out for me as well. But at position five, so far this year, gotta be the Celo X1. I've been a fan of the Endorphin Pro line since it first released. In fact, I remember the day the first one arrived. It was the day where Kev Next Percent Burton did his 100 mile challenge. That was back in like 2020. Big changes here in terms of the upper midsole and outsole on the Pro 4. And all of those changes elevate this one up near the top for me. It's now slightly more comfortable in terms of the upper, a little bit more traditional as well. Doesn't quite feel like you've got a fishing net around your foot. It's a little bit less reliant on that sort of speed roll technology as well. The rocker isn't quite as prominent in this version. The Piba foam beads in the midsole are a little bit more consistent than some of the other super shoe foams. You know, it's stable enough. It doesn't really feel like the plate is sort of overbearing in this one. I really love the suede touches on the shoe as well. It's almost a shoe that you could wear just casually, but you know, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna walk around Yeovil wearing this one on a Sunday morning or saying that'd be weird. Certainly a really nuanced update, adding in some extra foam as well. Some of the new Power Run HG just uplifts the shoe a little bit and it's certainly one of the best Endorphin Pro models yet. So that's my pick at number four. The big three now, and number three is the Fast R Nitro Elite 2 from Puma. Now, they fired this one over to me in November, but I piled loads of miles into it already. It's held up superbly well, it has to be said. No tearing or degradation to the foam whatsoever, and the outsole looks practically brand new. <laughs> loads of training, loads of testing, and I did race in this one in early February as well. Really hilly half marathon and to great effect. I think it was about... 133 or 134. The changes in this shoe are quite extreme over the first iteration. We have 
Puma Nitro Elite foam across the whole of the midsole now. And of course that special extra long carbon plate which really does work on hills. Try this one out people, it gives you a little boost as you push off. They've reworked the upper as well with a football boot like effort. And of course the sticky rubber here from the Puma grip on the outsole. They've certainly elevated this model now into sort of marathon territory I think for most people. And of course the first time we've really got a proper 40 mil heel stack as well. It's up there with the other top ballers in the super shoe game. So number three, the Puma Fastar Nitro Elite 2. At two, I didn't like it much at first, but it's got to be the Alpha Fly 3. This is my box fresh pair. I've got the Protos. They've got about 80 odd miles into them now. That shoe's been really growing on me. It did take some considerable break in though. So if you do get a pair, I suggest you get in some longer runs in there. Free up those AirPods and the foam a little bit. Needs a bit of tenderizing. It's now much more consistent and really goes the distance. For me, it's that forgiving impact protection for those longer runs, perhaps where you want to keep the legs feeling fresh for some faster sessions later in the week. I think you've got to look at this shoe as being a tool at the end of the day. It's really improved after the initial runs, just helping me to increase my endurance within my training. I think the V3 is more in tune with what the original alpha fly was when it first released i think they went a little bit off side from the original idea this one brings it back on track and it's something quite out of the ordinary and i'm really keen to see what i can do in terms of half or full marathon race distance in it so at number two the alpha fly three i think most of you have probably guessed what i've got at number one on this list this one shoe that's kind of bewitched me a little bit in 2024 and that is the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Paris. It's straight out the Bowerman playbook actually, making the shoe really light, really comfortable, and it builds upon the magic that you had in the previous versions. Only today I wore this for a 10K PB. Wasn't really expecting that at a local event, but I ran incredibly consistently throughout the whole thing. And towards the end, I'd say it was almost easy. You know, I never, ever doubted that i was gonna get under the time i wanted it's just a shoe with a midsole that i want to try every race distance i wonder what i could do on a 5k in these i think i'll give myself a rest tomorrow though now at least it's out across the world well and in the uk as well it was a bit of a delay but i met quite a few runners after the race today that were very keen to know a bit more about this shoe and i hope you guys can test it out very soon it comes with my highest recommendation so at top spot for 2024 so far is the ASICS Metaspeed Sky Paris. That's my top 10. There's been a bucket load of releases in 2024 so far. It's almost impossible to keep up with them. Let me know your most loved and most used shoes that you've picked up from 2024 so far down in the comments. Quick musical interlude for you. I can remember the very night when I first realized I wanted to play the guitar. There's a certain artist I saw playing and I thought, that's what I want to do. I want to get a guitar and make sounds like that. And the guy was Bernard Butler. Plays the guitar with this wonderful emotive feel. It's not always like the most technical or the fastest or anything like that, but he always makes a really interesting and very sort of moving sound. I'm really pleased that he's got a new album of his own material coming out. It seems like I've been waiting ages for this to happen his new album's going to be called good grief i believe it releases right at the end of may this year he has released one track from it it's called camber sands it's got this beautiful haunting brass section in it at one stage some really nice acoustic guitar playing and really gruff sort of emotive lyrics very soulful, very characterful. His voice has matured beautifully. It just sounds really sort of smoldering almost. He's also doing a solo tour as well, going to some really interesting places. I'm going to get to drive down the road like 20 miles and see him in Lyme Regis on a little theatre right by the beach. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. Maybe stay in a little quaint pub or something and then walk down to the venue. Can't wait to see him playing live again. He's one of the inspirations for me as a guitar player playing the guitars give me all sorts of amazing experiences that i never would have had and i do thank bernard butler for that go and check it out it's called camber sands by bernard butler from his forthcoming album good grief thanks for tuning in people hope you enjoyed today's list people seem to love list videos i quite like making them i've got to be honest hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like my name's ed bird and i'll be seeing you